Shots fired. Officer down. It's an assist officer. We just don't know where the suspect's at. Saying the suspect has a rifle. Get out here. We got a guy with a long rifle. We don't know where the hell he's at. Some of the dramatic audio traffic among law enforcement officials last night in downtown Dallas, that attack leaving five policemen dead, sparking a strong response from people across the country, including those who hope to lead as president. Donald Trump canceled his event today in South Florida, but he took to Twitter and Facebook writing the following. Last night's horrific execution-style shootings of 12 Dallas law enforcement officers, five of whom were killed and seven wounded, is an attack on our country. It is a coordinated, premeditated assault on the men and women who keep us safe. We must restore law and order. We must restore the confidence of our people to be safe and secure in their homes and on the street. Let's continue our conversation now by welcoming in via Skype from Southern California, Michael Reagan who is the author of a great new book entitled Lessons My Father Taught Me, The Strength, Integrity, and Faith of Ronald Reagan. And you can also reach Michael via Twitter, where his handle is at Reagan World. Now, joining me here on the Anchor Desk, pleased to have retired uh, police detective for the Delray Beach, Florida Police Department, Tom Wadley. Gentlemen, as always, we appreciate your time here on Newsmax Prime. Politics, you can't escape it, Michael. Uh, Hillary Clinton um, didn't do a campaign appearance, but she showed up on CNN late this afternoon. Here is what Hillary had to say. This is deeply troubling, and it should worry every single American. You know, we've got to do much more uh, to listen to one another, respect each other. We've got to do everything possible to, you know, support our police and support innocent Americans who have deadly encounters with the police. Michael, let me turn to you first. Uh, I guess you can't take politics out of this, but that last line that Hillary is using seems to suggest that every day innocent Americans are harmed by the police. Am I reading too much into that? No, you're not really reading too much into it. She's on the campaign trail and she's reaching out. At that point, that statement's really to black America. You know, vote for me. I really care about you. And, and that's exactly what that line was totally about. For the most part, the police around this country are phenomenal people. Are there bad seeds in the police department? Yes, there's bad seeds in the police department. There's bad seeds in every group in America that are, are going to cause you trouble, but don't paint a picture of all of them, in fact, doing the same. And the reality of it is, we all do go to our corners. There is no listening going on. Uh, when you turn on TV, if I'm looking at Black Lives Matter, I turn TV off. I don't need to be looking at Black Lives Matter. I don't think they should be leading any group of people anywhere. And so, do we need to come together? Yeah. But again, I'm not racist. I don't want to turn on TV and have people feel that I'm racist simply because I'm white. And that seems to be the argument that fact we are having in America today. Well, let's get to the heart of the matter by taking a call from America's heartland out to Hutchinson, Kansas for Eric. Hi, Eric. Hello. Your thoughts, sir? Well, uh, first thing I got to say is my heart goes out to all my brothers in arms and all of them that, you know, came back safe and was able to serve our communities, you know, by, you know, becoming police officers and, you know, continuing to fulfill their duty as well as ours. And you mentioned that, and it is true, when I was over visiting in Iraq, I was struck by the number of folks in the Guard, in reserves, and active duty who had a background in law enforcement. Let me bring in Tom Wadley now uh, with his days as a detective in Florida. Tom, I'm just wondering, a lot of us talk about the, the danger police officers face, but you lived it on a daily basis. Can, can you impart to us what it's like to in essence, have a target on your back. Well, certainly you have a target on your back. Um, but I will tell you, just 
becoming a police officer. You know that going into the job, but just getting that job. I was one of five out of 600 applicants that were able to get through the psychological testing, the background testing, and they look for that. They look for racism within individuals, especially in the psychological. They'll ask 1,500 questions on a written exam, and they'll ask it 10 different ways, the same question. So they try and weed that out. They root it out. When I came on, uh, you know, you had so many old cops from the 60s that were just getting ready to retire. Um, so you have a whole different type of police officer today and we have 800,000 cops um, and they handle tens of thousands of calls a day without incident so people seem to forget about that fact but if you have an iPhone you can certainly make it an international event well we know that people are picking up their phones to call us here at 1877 Newsmax our next call from Alliston Alabama Lewis is on the line hi Lewis Hey, how you doing today, uh, J.D.? And I also want to say uh, hello to your uh, other two gentlemen on your program, too. Thank you, Lewis. Okay, my take is this right here. Okay, I'm an Air Force veteran, and I served under two commanders-in-chiefs, former President Carter and Mr. Reagan's father also. I served up under him, and I was proud to put that uniform on under my service for my military country and all that right there. And the only comment I got to say is this right here, is that the guy that went down there did this senseless act yesterday down there in Dallas, Texas, was a disgrace to that uniform. That's you, all I got to say. To well, Lewis, we appreciate what you have to say, and we also thank you for your service. And, uh, Michael, as we hear Lewis right there, I, I'm just thinking about what you said to us just a few minutes ago. Uh, most veterans serve with distinction. He obviously talks about uh, Micah X. Johnson, the suspect, who was gunned down or died in the, the explosion uh, after extended negotiations. But what Micah X. Johnson did is not indicative of most of our veterans. No, certainly not. You don't paint a picture of all the veterans because one veteran, you know, does this or two veterans or three veterans when you have hundreds of thousands of veterans putting their life on the line every single day uh, to make sure that we in America are free. And I, I don't think you could do the same thing with, with police departments and say, okay, there's one or two bad situations or three or four and paint everybody in the police department as being racist and what have you. I think it also has a lot to do with fear though. I remember Jesse Jackson many years ago saying, you know, it's like walking down the street in Washington DC and I hear footsteps behind me. I turn around, I certainly hope it's a white person. You know, I, I think people and maybe even some of the policemen, it's not racism as being fearful uh, because the only time you really see blacks in the news is when they're creating a crime or in the middle of a crime. Maybe we need to start showing good news for everybody instead of showing everybody in a bad light simply for the ratings. Tom Wadley, let me talk to you about thinking back on your experience, plain clothes and detective and, uh, and other jobs you've had in law enforcement. What is the one thing that sticks with you to this day that you wish people understood about law enforcement? I would say that uh, if I could just put it in a day's worth work on patrol, you're handling 15 to 20 calls a day. That seventh or eighth call, you have to respond, and they're probably when they're one every five year contact with a police officer, they expect you to be professional, they expect you to handle their case, they expect you to give them results. But what they don't understand is the toll that it takes on the officer handling the 15 to 20 calls a day, running call to call and eating their lunch in their car. So I can't put a specific case, because I worked uh, some international cases that, that were specific to me. But in general, uh, you have to know what they go through through, through the day, or go into a, a man's house who weighs 250 pounds that just beat his wife up and tell him it's time to go to jail. Yeah, so if many I, different I demands. Very second. quickly, Michael, about uh, 20 I seconds. Just, Go ahead. I'd really like to find out from Tom and others, how many black lives are saved every day?
because of the police departments in the United States of America. You are asking a question that is more than rhetorical, Michael. As a matter of fact, if you'll both agree, as we used to say in the House, by unanimous consent, we will continue this because it turns out there's a little bit of a problem at Newsmax New York that delays the start of Dennis Michael Lynch's program tonight. So I tell you what, gentlemen, if you can hang in here with me, and those of you at home, hang in as well, too. We'll get some of your calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 877-639-7629 as we expand the program after this.